David, how are you doing today? All right. How are you doing, Rory? Really good. Such a pleasure to talk to you again. So the last time you and I spoke, it was for Violent Night, and you were doing every stunt under the sun. <laughs> but in this one, you're mostly the guy over the radio, which in, in a way can be good. But I've seen you also actually get into the car a few times in this movie. Did you actually get to experience the full kind of the G force, the cars at their prime, when like when you were making this? Yeah, uh, the first time we got in them, they wanted us to have a driver with us, drive us around the shack, and that was pretty awful. Actually, being a passenger in those cars is pretty terrible, but actually driving them is fun. Uh, it's not as fun as a stick shift car because they're they're paddle shifters. You know, there's no clutch. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's fun to drive them. But I would not recommend being a passenger in them. No, really. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Um, your character in this. Uh, now you can correct me if I'm wrong. Obviously, because you would have a better idea than I would. He is the most. He's one of my favorite types of characters you see in sports movies, where he gets to walk in and be like, "You're all shit. Everyone is <laughs> get out." Um, and you get to be what I call like a lovable downer at the start of the movie. <laughs> right. But for the whole film, we as the audience are just waiting for you to give like one single iota of like a nice thing to say or a nod. We're like, yes, he's done it. We know we've won him over. So when you get to play, you know, characters like this that audiences do genuinely love, do you just kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm in it because you, you know these kind of characters, they, they win us over. Yeah, I mean... You know, it's still a big, it's a big responsibility as well, though, because there is a version of that character that winds up being not great. But I, mm -hmm. I, uh, I do think what's funny is, is you have to kind of layer it where, you know, he's very much saying how he doesn't believe in these people. And I think underneath is the desperate need for them to be great. And I think that that's the unexpressed need. It's the subliminal need. It doesn't ever get expressed but I think that's the layer that makes you because you want you want him to give them a compliment not just for them but for him and I think that's uh, quite a beautiful thing but you know it's hard I mean I love those characters too and the problem is you know I grew up with Gene Hackman and Hoosiers and you're just never gonna I mean that just one of the greatest performances of all time and I kept having that in my head the whole time was like you know him measuring the basketball, uh, you'll, you'll notice that it's 10 feet. <laughs> like, I mean, all these amazing scenes. So, yeah, it's a lot of responsibility. I mean, if, if you're going to compare yourself to anyone, you might as well compare yourself to Gene because, you know, <laughs> I think, well, that's yeah. the target. Just in, just in hairline alone, that's, um, <laughs> that's my, my rating. And with Gran Turismo, it's, it's an odd kind of Venn diagram because you've got gaming fans who are, they love what they do. And then you've got racing fans who also love what they do and then just like recently in your career you've got stranger things fans who again some of the biggest and most devout fans in the world marvel fans again huge fan base very devoted to what they love do you do you find yourself wandering into these massive fan bases where you're like right i have to i have to be very careful about everything i say for the stuff that these people absolutely love and has there ever been one particular fan interaction that you're like, this is why I do what I do. This has made this worthwhile. They, they're usually the more subtle fan interactions. There's a lot of, you know, there can be a lot of hoopla and a lot of screaming and a lot of selfies with me. Uh, but that stuff kind of fades away. It's more, you know, I've had people give me things based on my performances, like a poem of theirs that they really relate to or um, you know a picture or something or something that they themselves felt creatively based on something I was doing and that's always very gratifying to feel like you've sparked something in someone that makes them commit to their own artistry so that's really a beautiful thing I've always you know and the other thing is that uh, sometimes people tell me that my work makes them feel understood or not alone. Because I think that I play sometimes characters that are difficult or that are hard to maybe initially empathize with, aren't the most nice or likable. And I feel like there's a lot of people in the world who um, 
you know, have difficulties living in the world. I think my characters do as well. And so when people say that they, it helps them, you know, in the world to see characters like that, I find that extremely gratifying too. Fantastic. Thank you, man. If you miss a line in the game, you reset. You miss it on the track. You could die. I know this track. I've raced it a thousand times. That's what I'm talking about. Taking it higher.